I have learned a lot this week about Gaussian splatting technique. And one reason is this new program called PostShot. I really like it and its clear instruction and parameters have really helped me to understand what are the ingredients for producing a good 3D Gaussian model consist of. Besides that, I have read some interesting articles and found various enlightening facts that have helped me learn new things about 3D scanning in general. So let's see what kind of an observation I have found. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again. This time I wanted to make a video about my thoughts on some new discoveries I have came across while working with these splats. So far I have come to the understanding that 3D scanning to Gaussian splatting models is very functional when we want to produce environments. And with that in mind, the important question is, how can we make interior scans? I recently came across an interesting article that dealt with exactly this topic. And by the way, if you want to follow up up-to-date news and publications about the development of this technology, I recommend following the website called radiancefield.com. Its reporter Michael Rublov has creditably compiled current news there and is constantly publishing interesting reports on the latest stages of this technology. So anyway, in this site I read an interview about a Chinese artist and coder named Yu Lei He, who has implemented an interesting small project related to the 3D scanning of the interior. Yu Lei has realized an interactive Gaussian splatting model of a small Italian art gallery, where you can move relatively freely and look at the paintings in the exhibition. Everything works fine directly in web browser and it's a very well made example of how elegant and optimized 3D scanning of the space has been done. I recommend reading the article as Yule explains how he photographed the space and you can even find the source of his images in a short video on his YouTube channel. I consider this is a very good reference and from it you can pick up very important instructions on how to perform the scanning of the interior with a camera. And with these instructions in mind, I set out to scan the first space that came across. I have my car parked in a parking carriage where there is an interesting space to carry out experiments suitable for such 3D scanning. If you have been following my channel, you may have seen my previous video where I saw the result of this scan and how I combined it in Unreal Engine. I made this scan with my iPhone 15 and shot it in portrait mode from multiple different videos. One of the best things about the new BoastShot program is that the Gaussian splatting model can be trained from several videos now. Previously, when modeling was done from the video, the scan had to be performed in one shot. Now camera tracking has developed so much in PostShot that it understands relatively well different shots and they don't even have to continue from the same place where the shot ends. Camera tracking is able to build a point cloud even if the shot are taken from a different direction. When I tried this feature, I was quite amazed at how well camera tracking was able to place the images from a total of 8 different videos and build a relatively accurate point cloud corresponding to reality. But even though the point cloud itself managed to form well, I still noticed that the training itself did not produce a good enough Gaussian model. There was something wrong with the source material. I used a total of 1000 images for all the video clips 
and I let the training itself process through the 30k iteration steps. But still, the model was full of floating artifacts and haze particles. Especially the floor of the parking cars became very uneven and lumpy. It wasn't really a very good looking Gaussian model, but it was definitely the biggest indoor scan that I have managed to build so far. However, I wanted to see how it would look in Unreal and see if there was anything that could be done to it inside the engine. I used the Luma AI plugin to import the model and decided to eat away the points considering the floor using cutout boxes. Then I built a new floor from Blaine elements and also placed some rectangle lights in the space. By adjusting the colors and customizing the brightness of the lights, I managed quite well to embed the Gaussian point cloud together with the 3D elements. All in all, this was an interesting test and it gave me understanding that Gaussian models should be used as such a hybrid model. Splat model works well in the background, while things that are closer can be built with 3D assets and photogrammetry models. This reminds me of an example I came across here on YouTube. A Slovakian company called Overhead 4D has made an excellent practical implementation of a hybrid model like this, creatively mixing Gaussian models and a castle realized with photogrammetry, as well as all those great sky and water elements that can be built with Unreal Engine. They have even made it work in VR mode. I leave the links in the description. But back to my parking carriage model, I still wasn't very satisfied with the implementation of it. I believed that the Gaussian model could be made even better. So I studied even more closely the instructions and tips that Yulei told in that aforementioned article and went back to the parking carriage to do another scan. This time I decided to use my beloved 360 camera again. I have a strong belief that 360 cameras can still be used very effectively in 3D scanning of interiors. And because it can see in all directions, I can scan the space in both directions in one scan round. So once again I walk in the space around an area about 100 square meters in such a way that one of the lenses was aimed at the interior parts of the parking carriage and the other at the outer walls. I recorded these shots as a video from three different heights. In the camera settings I made sure that exposure was locked and all the white balance were turned off. After scanning when I was editing these 360 videos in Insta360 Studio, I ended up choosing a 4x3 as the image aspect ratio. Since my previous experiences with vertical image hadn't produced a nice result, I thought that this more boxed-like image would be a better format for camera tracking. I also made sure that there was no fisheye distortion in the image. I have learned to realize that camera tracking performs much better for the images where the perspective consists of a straight lines. With this method I ended up to create a total of 18 separate video clips of scanning material from the parking garage. And then I dragged all these video files to Postsat for processing. Of course, there was too much material and pictures and it, it's not necessary to use every frames of the videos in the scan. So I ended up using a total of only a thousand frames and let the Postsat program choose the best images from the videos. So far I have noticed that the default settings that have been put into the program works perfectly and they are on these values for a reason. 
So I studied the process. The training process takes time. It took me about 45 minutes on my RTX 3070 graphics card to complete the camera tracking part. And on top of that, the actual creation of the Gaussian splats took about 50 minutes. So in total, to get 30k iteration steps accuracy, the process took my computer about 1 hour 35 minutes. But even though this time the Gaussian model already looked significantly better, it was much cleaner and there were no longer noticeable floating artifacts. I still wanted to test if it could be calculated even more accurately. 30k iteration has remained for me from previous calculation as some kind of a peak value. I thought that the Gaussian model should not be calculated higher than that, because after 30k there are no more significant changes in accuracy. I was wrong. When I initially doubled the number of steps up to 60k and persistently watched whether more details were created in blurry areas, I noticed that the calculation really progresses and eventually creates more points in these so-called empty areas. It does not happen systematically in one area, but calculation proceeds in certain order and refinements are created very slowly. So you have to be patient and let the process do its job. In PostShot it is very easy to change the training goal. If towards the end of the calculation you notice that it has not yet arrived at a sufficiently accurate result, you can pause the training and change the iteration number to a higher value. Then you just continue training process again. PostShot's live preview feature is very practical and tells you a lot about how the process is progressing and what kind of accuracy has been achieved. This way I finally ended up setting the maximum iteration to 300k, which was 10 times bigger than the original value. And in the end it took about a little over 10 hours to calculate this. And was it worth it? I would say yes. Much more detail had been added to the model and it began to resemble the original source images even more. Of course, it still wasn't perfect, but there were indeed more points in these soft and empty areas. So, through these experiments, I learned a lot about the meaning of iteration value. But I also learned that the number of source images matters a lot. I realized that the thousand frames I put in the beginning might even be a little too much. The training process can be made much easier and faster if you just reduce the number of frames considerably. 3D scanning with video is not economical in that sense because it creates a lot of useless images. Let's say if you produce about 10 minutes of scanning material as a video and only about 16 seconds of it are necessary and usable material for the calculation, this ratio will help you understand what is essential in building a Gaussian splatting model. So finding a balance between the number of frames you put in the training process and the maximum steps of iteration accuracy is very important. And a good result can only be achieved by patiently doing experiments and tests. But finally, here at the end of this video I would like to share an interesting aspect of a game development. I was contacted by one of my followers about my latest video. He was excited about my parking garage experiment with Unreal and asked if I could send him those project files. 
I replied that why not and sent the project to him. He is a qualified Unreal game developer from Italy called Verumbit. And he managed to build a small game level from the file amazingly quickly. There he had built collision barriers and collision boxes around cars, poles and the walls so that game character does not walk through Gaussian points and can even climb on top of cars. This was also an interesting test and I think Gaussian models get a new perspective when viewed through the game character. It is fun to shoot and jump around inside the splat model and see the environment from third person view. So big shout out and thanks to Verumbit for making this small game level experiment. I recommend check out his YouTube channel, I leave the link below. Well, I thank you if you watched this video so far and I hope that my thoughts were useful and inspiring. Don't forget to hit the like button and follow my channel. I'll stay here to play and explore more dimensions of these splats. Until the next time, goodbye.